सदाशिव सरंभां शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर केशव बादरायण प्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तदेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम ई विल चैंट यू कैन रिपीट ओम सहना सहनौ भुन सह वीर वह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमा वह शांति 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 सो वी हैव एंटर्ड इन टू दि शांति पाठा ऑफ दिस उपनिषद कल अमृत बिंदु उपनिषद उपनिषद द टेक्स्ट डीलिंग विथ द ड्रॉप ऑफ नॉलेज for or knowledge of immortality and in this shanti patha in the first part there is a prayer for the protection from the obstacles that can come in attainment of knowledge second part the prayer for nourishment by the result of knowledge third is the prayer that may we make necessary efforts for getting this vidya for the study of shastra on the part of the student there is effort on the part of the teacher also there is effort then up to this we had seen now tejasvi now aditam astu aditam studied now by us whatever is studied by us now aditam avabhyam aditam tejasvi astu let it be bright let whatever studied by us be bright what is the meaning of bright bright means it remains it is retained in the mind it is it is available for recollection available for reference available as and when required means whatever we have studied let it remain in the mind bright and bright has got another meaning effective let whatever studied by us be bright means be effective means it will lead to the result mere study is not enough the transformation by vision by the knowledge needs to happen and that is called the effectiveness of knowledge so let it be effective or let it be retained in the mind otherwise most of the people have this problem swami ji i have been studying vedanta for so many years but i don't remember anything what is there in mundaka upanishad i don't know at least i name i remember and uh, mundaka upanishad i studied when swami ji was conducting classes there that all those details i remember but what is the content of mundaka upanishad 
In fact, sometimes people get confused between Mundaka Upanishad and Mandukya Upanishad. Ha, Swamiji, Mundaka Upanishad, Omkara, no? Omkara, three padas and all. It's not there in Mundaka, it is there in Mandukya. So, people have this difficulty. So, we pray that let it remain in our mind. Tejasvi, bright, retained in our mind. But, incidentally, we need to note that in Vedanta, we don't have to struggle so much to remember. Even though it looks like, but as a student, as a mumukshu, as a jignasu, you need not have tension of remembering. As a teacher, we have to remember. But as a student, you don't have to worry about it. You pray for remembrance. It is nice if it is remembered, the details. But if it is not remembered, don't have an extra tension. Already you have got so many tensions. Because of tension, you came to Vedanta. And what is Vedanta doing? Adding one more tension. It's like going to some doctor and he gives me one more problem. I went to the doctor for solving the problem. He gave one more. So that need not happen. In Vedanta, the essential content is very little. What is the content? All that is here is Ishvara, that Ishvara I am. That's not a very big thing. And this also you don't have to remember. You keep seeing this fact, keep understanding this fact. Then it will be remembered. Even if words, these words you don't remember, doesn't matter. But if this vision is there, good enough. So don't have complex based on remembering or not remembering. But definitely we pray to Bhagavan that let it be remembered so that I will be able to study better. And I will enjoy all the Upanishads study more. And therefore, Tejasvino Adhita Mastu. For teacher it is very important. He needs to remember. What is the meaning of this shloka? What is the connection with the other shloka and all this, you know? So for teacher, as a teacher, you require little more memory. As a student, some discount. So, tejas we know, adhita must do. Like Ramakrishna Paramam used to say, he said, for committing suicide, you require a small knife. Small knife is enough. Tough phadak, you do something, knife. Over. But if you want to go for a war, with, with knife, you cannot fight a war, you know. With a big army, you require a sword. So similarly, here, for a student, if you want to remain as a student, and uh, you want to enjoy the vision, don't have the tension of remembrance. Just keep trying to understand. Let me understand the vision. Let me understand the essential vision. Is there any doubt? Let me resolve the doubt. That is one thing. Other thing is, you reduce the distractions of the mind. You reduce the areas which are occupying your memory. Now I can give this example, your mobile. If you have put all unnecessary things, then what? Memory full. They ask, you delete some messages. So similarly here, our mind we have made full with all unnecessary things and keep on adding. Therefore, what we can do is, where we don't have to occupy our mind, don't have to engage our mind, don't put your mind into that. Which weapon Russia is using against Ukraine, you don't have to know. Don't bother about it. What policy this America is going to have with this African country, hey, you don't have to bother. You are not a foreign minister. You are already retired. So, from all those things, you can withdraw. So that your, your memory is available for this. Otherwise, you are not making available your me this memory space. You are occupying with other things. Therefore, you reduce that. If you want to remember more things. And don't repeatedly entertain this thought. I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't remember. 
One lady was, was uh, in Bangalore, she kept telling, Swamiji, I am forgetting, I am forgetting everything, I am forgetting everything. I said, you are not forgetting this fact that you are forgetting. You forget this fact. <laughs> How, why are you remembering so much, I am forgetting? What I want to say, don't, you need not repeat this thought. What you can say, that now I need to be more careful, I have to put forth more effort to remember. I do have some memory, let me use it well. It is not that your memory is totally gone. You have some remembrance, the power of mem uh, remembrance, memory you have. So, what should be the, uh, the uh, way of looking at our memory power? I have, st I am still left with some memory power. Let me use it discreetly. That is a better way of thinking rather than keep on saying, I am not able to remember, I am not able to remember. What is the use? You are not solving the problem. Always think in empowering manner. The thinking has to empower you, not disempower you. Most of the people I have seen, they go against their own well-being by wrong way of thinking. We are going to see about that. So, be your friend, do not be your enemy. So, by entertaining this thinking, I am forgetting, I am forgetting, I do not remember anything. They say, some people have, I think many people have this habit of using exaggerated language. Swamiji, I do not remember anything. Do you know I am Swamiji? Ha, I know, so you remember. <laughs> anyway, so, I just, what I want to tell that, let us have healthy attitude towards everything in our life, including our memory. All right, so, Tejas we know, Adhita Mastu, and we also pray, pray to Bhagawan, and trust your prayers. In fact, many times people pray, but they think, I pray, but somebody, nothing will happen. So, it will not happen. <laughs> many wives, know, they give uh, the instruction to their husband, you bring this, you bring this. And afterwards, they say, I know you will forget. So, you will forget. <laughs> At least one instruction he follows. So, <laughs> you will forget, sir. I will forget. <laughs> All right. So, Tejas, we know. Aditam Astu. And the last one is Ma Vidvisha Vahai. Literal translation is May we not hate each other. Each other means Guru and Shishya, the student and teacher. May we not hate each other. But better expression is May we not misunderstand each other. Because in every interaction, there is a possibility of misunderstanding. Other day I was telling that is Swarupanu Sandana Ashtakam Tapo Yagna Dana Bihi. So, Dana, I, I talked about so much about Dana. There is a possibility of misunderstanding. What? Swamiji wants some uh, money. He want to extract some money, he is preparing the ground. No. Misunderstanding possible and therefore, what happens? Your mind is put off, you are, you are, you are a little bit, you know, watchful that I should not be carried away by Swamiji's words. He will ask to write the check and I have brought the check book. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, I will keep in my room or something, whatever. Possibility. Therefore, I immediately clarified. I know that sometimes people may think like this. So, there is a possibility of misunderstanding. And especially in Gurukulam setup, means the students are staying with the teacher, residential course. Even this possibility is that teacher may be interacting with some person little more. And therefore, what? Ah, Swamiji likes that person. When I did Namaskara, he did not even look at me. He just went away. And that person, he stood there and talked to him. 
गुजरात से आते हैं इसलिए आफ्टर ऑल यू नो लाइकिंग इज देर सो पॉसिबिलिटी इज देर दैट स्वामी जी इज पार्शियल ही डजेंट लाइक मी दिस इश्यूज आर देर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट यू नो वॉट हैपन्स वेन द स्टूडेंट एंटरटेन्स दिस थॉट दैट माई टीचर इज पार्शियल he has so much strong likes and dislikes then the teaching given by him or her will not have so much impact because you think that he is simply talking he himself has not become free from raga dveshas how this knowledge can make me free from raga dvesha you will reject the vision you will reject the effectiveness of vision therefore this prayer is very important and puja swami ji here he talks about the the problem of unconscious everybody has got unconscious unconscious means suppressed emotions desires and uh, they are suppressed and they are waiting to be surfaced and go away they can go only by getting surfaced and then go now that type of thing happens when you have relative atmosphere of comfort security that is why in marriage in initial stage for some time this husband and wife they are becoming comfortable with each other so things are good and afterwards what happens when there is some security in relationship that this fellow will not leave me so easily or this girl will not leave me when that some security comes then unconscious comes out then for small small things they will be criticizing each other finding the fault with each other and both will be wondering oh when we married when this was not there she was so nice he was so nice kya se kya ho gaya what happened that type of thing happens person doesn't know that unconscious is now coming out it will come out when there is relative feeling of safety security some comfort then this comes out similarly in the student teacher relationship also it comes out what happens that the student has so much unconscious and in in the relationship with the teacher he feels comfortable because of compassion of the teacher he is so loving caring he does so many things and also this person gets some knowledge of atma and he says yeah so i am free only relatively i am i am really free so it gives some comfort some wrong notions are dropped it gives some more peace comfort and in that atmosphere the unconscious comes out and one outcome of unconscious is there can be transference transference means what whatever relations you had very significant relationship you had with someone in your childhood or early age and some of the emotions you had suppressed you had love for that person but at the same time so much feeling of hurt as well then what happens initially there is a positive transference means you will say you are wonderful the wife also will be thinking then when in marriage initial days oh i got a man i was looking for is so caring and all this positive transference means you see all positive similarly with guru also oh my guru is bhagwan you are indra you are chandra you know that will be there and guru also think my god i got a wonderful disciple he looks upon me as god and so so devoted so much ready to serve so sometime that remains honeymoon period like this ek guru shishya also honeymoon period is there so this this honeymoon period 
then all my what is called uncomfortable emotions painful hurtful feeling are the the feelings of hurt pain suffering put down insulted humiliated all those feelings which were there they are now transferred on this person means i had a problem with my uncle in my childhood that uncle was he is caring but controlling shouting at me if i don't do uh, my study well shout at me i bring less mark shout at me even slap some time so what happens i transfer my uncle on my teacher and whatever anger i had against my uncle which i could not express what i do i express with my teacher so this teacher becomes a sitting duck for all transference that's what happens it happens in husband wife relation wife relationship sometimes even among friends it can happen so in such situation when transference happens then students start seeing all this <clears throat> wrong things in the teacher he is partial he doesn't care for me he cares only for some people who are very rich i am not so rich all these reasons also gives or i am not so beautiful i am not so young swami likes only youngsters i am little bit middle aged 75 middle aged so <laughs> till you die you are middle aged so and therefore what happens rapo is is gone and therefore what happens even during the class this class is going on but the students mind is busy with those thoughts and even teacher says by this wisdom you can be free from all problems of ragadveshas the student mind will say what he is talking no. he himself has not become free from this ragadveshas he is asking us to do what is this all this is for just talking what happens the whole exercise does not give benefit person may complete the course get certificate if, if some organization give certificate certificate also may get and since they are certificate he can teach also but the result of knowledge doesn't come therefore one needs to be aware of this problem and we have to pray to bhagwan that this unconscious let it get expressed in a safe manner with my awarefulness then it will be less harmful it will be handleable therefore we pray to bhagwan ma vid dvisha vahai and sometimes what happens in such situation when the student has done this negative transference on the teacher the teacher is handling with such a big group therefore he has to control that person the student say i want to talk to you i want to talk to you i want to talk to you and 3 uh, hours 4 hours and then it cannot be done with everybody and therefore teacher may restrict no you cannot come you cannot do this you then what will happen dvesha comes hatred comes gossip comes our teacher is like this and always there will be some people who have dissatisfaction that there will be a group dissatisfied group that's what happens and it is not with this which is swami ji was telling so means he, swami ji said in every every course it will be like this therefore what we pray to bhagwan ma vid dvisha vahai let there not be misunderstanding hatred between us which is very very important this the rapo the proper connection between the student and teacher then shantihi 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 three types uh, three times shanti is chanted for removing three types of obstacles the first one we can say adhyatmika adhyatmika vighna so shant first shanti means 
let there be removal of the obstacles related to the individual body mind sense complex adhyatmika vigna nivrutti means some disease can be there back ache etc can be there sometime mind becomes dull you know and therefore we pray to bhagwan to remove those adhyatmika vignas shanti second shanti is adi bhautika adi bhautika means the obstacles coming from surrounding sometime too much noise is there from surrounding so it is difficult to study therefore we pray for this nivrutti the removal of vigna from the surrounding over which we have little control small uh, less some control but very little we can perhaps request we can go away we can put ear plugs all this we can do but it they do create obstacles so we pray for that third shanti is adi devika vigna nivrutti artham shanti so pray for the removal of the obstacles coming from natural forces like very heavy rain so it is flooded all around so how can we come from room to the class difficult or cyclone is there these are called adi devika so prayer for removal of those the obstacles coming from natural forces over which we don't have any control thus three shantis for removal of three types of obstacles all right now we will enter into the mantra mano hid vividham proktam shuddhan cha shuddham eva cha ashuddham kama sankalpam शुद्धम काम विवर्जितम या प्लीज चेंट दिस कैन बी चेंटेड इन अनदर वे आल्सो मनो हिद्विधम प्रोक्त शुद्ध शुद्ध मेव लाइक दट आलो बट दर इज सम कन्वेन्शन दट जनरली उपनिषद मंत्र वी डू नॉट चेंट विद विद स्टाइल ऑफ स्पार्क मंत्र फॉर वी आर फॉलोइंग दिस सो इन दिस फर्स्ट एंड देन सेकंड श्लोका the analysis of bondage and the solution to this problem of bondage these are the two topics discussed bandha swarupa mukti sadhanam and this topic is discussed in in shastras in different ways how bondage is and how one can be free from bondage this is presented in different ways first i will give you one sample and then we'll enter into this generally we say that our bondage is fundamentally because of ignorance i do not know my limitless nature therefore i identify with this limited body mind sense complex so the fundamental cause is ignorance and ignorance leads to this identification with the body mind sense complex called adhyasaha dehad yadhyasaha superimposition of the attributes of the body mind sense complex upon me and because of that because of the identification with the body mind sense complex there is sense of limitation why 
because body mind sense complex is limited i have identified with that therefore what i will feel limited not only limited i will consider myself to be the doer of action experiencer of all results of act, results of action in sanskrit we call it kartrutva bhoktrutva and parichinnatva buddhi so sense of limitation sense of doership sense of experiencership sometimes they call it enjoyership and because of this sense of limitation i will have desire to attain something thinking that i will be complete if i get this or get rid of this thus ajnanam adhyasa parichinnatva buddhi the sense of limitation leading to desire kama and when desire is there and i am looking upon myself as a doer then what i will do action desire will lead to action karma and karma will lead to karma phala the result result of action and result of action can be visible result and invisible result called punya papa and after that punya papa and this experience of visible result what will happen i will have the samskaras the impressions born of the experience of the result of action and that samskara the impression will again give rise to the desire and desire because of the experience of the result of karma there is a samskara sometimes it is called vasana and because of that vasana or samskara there will be again desire again karma again karma phala throughout the life this will keep happening and at the end of one's life still person has so many desires and also he has got so many punya papa because all of them he could not exhaust and therefore what will happen this punya papa account will give him new body another body it can be animals body it can be devas body or it can be human body so person will have another body and in that another body if it is a human body the cycle will be repeated this is how the bondage is ajnanam adhyasa parichinnatva buddhi kamah karma karma phala samskara ichha and in the background all of them remain ajnanam is still there adhyasa is still there and this desire and desire action the result of action that continues this is what the bondage is and in that so many pleasant experiences are there and unpleasant experiences are there and uh, even though human life is almost 50 50 almost only 51 49 like that difference is there then only you become human being if you have got this almost half punyam and half papam then only you become human being if you have got too much punyam you will go up higher class higher class means devaloka means you become devatas if you have got more papam then go to narakas etc lower lokas so all human beings are middle class people yeah thoda punyam a little papam little punyam gujarati pickle also gujarati pickle is thoda katta thoda meetha so <laughs> pickle thoda khatta means sour and little bit sweet all right so this is what the nature of bondage is now what is the solution solution is you get the knowledge of yourself being limitless assimilate this knowledge 
I am limitless Brahma. And because of this knowledge, what will happen? Ignorance about myself will go away. When ignorance goes away, ignorance born, identification with the body mind sense complex goes away. And when identification with the body mind sense complex goes away, my sense of limitation goes away. Then this desires, especially binding desires go away. And desires are not there, therefore there is no compulsive actions. And not only desires are not there, my sense of doership and sense of enjoyership also negated and therefore Punya Papa collection is not there. Whatever Punya Papa is there, that account also is burnt. And therefore what happens? This person, because of owning up his true nature as Purna Brahma, he enjoys Jivan Mukti, freedom while living. And at the end of his life, he does not have any desire, he does not have any Punya Papa, whatever Punya Papa to be exhausted, he has exhausted in this life and previous account is closed and therefore he has got zero balance. And therefore what? No more Janma, which is called Videha Mukti. Thus, Ajnanam leads to bondage, Nanam leads to Moksha. This is a, this is the analysis of bondage and freedom. This comes under, you know, which topic? Introduction. Three topics are there, introduction. All right. Here, this bondage and freedom are presented in terms of mind. Because the mind seems to be biggest problem for many people, especially when you come to spirituality, mind is a big problem. Swamiji, everything okay, but my mind is a problem. And here, that presentation is there of the bondage in terms of this mind and presentation of freedom also in terms of mind. With this background, we see this shloka. Manaha he dvividam proktam, he indeed, it is well known, mind is proktam, is told, is considered, dvividam, twofold. The mind is considered twofold, is of two types, dvividam is of two types. What are the two types? Upanishad itself explains. Shuddham cha, ashuddham eva cha, pure and impure. So, there are two types of mind, pure mind and impure mind. Mind, the word mind in Sanskrit it is called, the word, uh, the mind in Sanskrit it is called manaha. Manyate anena iti manaha. The instrument by which thinking happens, that is called manaha. So, mind is a faculty of thinking, is a flow of thoughts. Now, this mind is born of this Pancha Mahabhutas, five elements, which are born of Maya, the creative power of Ishvara. I want to just explain very briefly, otherwise Maya, what is, is a big topic. But let us understand Maya, what is Maya? Creative power of Ishvara. Brahman by itself cannot create this world, being changeless. But Brahman, with its power Maya, it creates this world. So that creative power of Ishvara called Maya, from that this Sukshma Mahabhuta, subtle elements are born, from that mind is born. So mind is indirectly born of Maya, 
क्रिएटिव पावर ऑफ द लॉर्ड मायाम तु प्रकृतिम विद्यात माई नम तु महेश्वरम दोज हुव अटेंडेड द श्वेताश्वर उपनिषद क्लास दे नो दैट इज दैट माया इज प्रकृति इज द मटेरियल कॉज द मॉडिफाइंग मटेरियल कॉज और वी कैन से इज अ क्रिएटिव पावर ऑल राइट एंड दिस माया इज कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ थ्री गुणास guna here generally they translate as a quality but guna means factors so maya is consisting of three factors called guna sattva raja rajas and tamas sattva you don't say sattvam rajah tamah or rajas tamas and these three factors are responsible for three types of creation three aspects seen in the creation we see that there are certain things which are capable of knowing like our organs our mind so there is aspect in this creation in the form of knowing and knowing is possible because of a particular factor obtaining in maya and that factor is called sattva guna so sattva guna is a part of maya responsible for knowing knowing faculties and also it is responsible for experience of happiness thus in maya there is a factor called sattva responsible for happiness and knowing then another factor is there called rajah in maya which is responsible for desires and activities third factor is called tamah responsible for inertia inert material inertia in the inert material laziness confusion moha thus there are three factors in maya or other three factor constitute maya so if these three factors are imagined to be the strands then maya is a rope maya is a rope having these three strands in the form of sattva rajas and tamaguna we can say three constituents of maya all right and mind is made up of predominantly sattva guna because it is having the faculty of knowing but it is influenced by rajoguna and tamoguna as well so this mind is shuddham proktam is pure when it is having predominance of sattva guna not overpowered by rajoguna and tamoguna so sattva pradhana not being influenced by rajoguna effect tamoguna effect is called shuddham this upanishad is commented upon by one acharya called upanishad brahma yogin is a beautiful sanskrit commentary very brief commentary so he said shuddham vidyam shatva so mind is considered to be shuddham when it is characterized by knowledge and the factors conducive to the knowledge especially self knowledge shuddham pure so vidyam shatvat shuddham and ashuddham evacha 
and the mind is impure another type of mind is impure which is impacted by rajoguna and tamoguna Raj, rajas tamo bhyam abhibhutam manaha the mind which is overpowered by this effect of rajoguna and tamoguna the effect of rajoguna tamoguna is what rajoguna is creating this activity desires and tamoguna create confusions wrong understanding so that type of mind is ashuddha mevacha so two types of minds are there pure mind and impure mind and mind is a flow of thoughts therefore the quality of the mind is in keeping with the predominant thoughts the mind entertains the quality of thoughts decide the quality of the mind not single thought the quality of the predominant thoughts decides the quality of the mind so shuddham and ashuddham is based on what based on the types of thoughts entertained predominantly by the mind and that is made clear in the next line ashuddham kama sankalpam that mind is ashuddham impure which is kama sankalpam which is entertaining kama and sankalpa predominantly what is kama kama means desire i want this i have to i i cannot be without this i should have this at any cost i will have this kama desire sankalpa means we translate in english fancy or fanciful imagination like what this is nice to have this gadget is very good it is worth having how nice if one has this gadget this is called fancy this is called sankalpa and sankalpa fancy is the basis for kama that is how you see the relationship developed how you see the person today you saw tomorrow you see hi looks very nice she looks very nice oh his eyes are very beautiful our eyes beautiful something very nice very nice this nice buddhi nice buddhi means not buddhi is nice nice iti buddhi hi nice buddhi so the idea that this thing is very nice worth having if it is there it will be nice you see some car today you see your neighbor's car then what looks very good next day very good color shiny steel gray yes, very nice color very big car so whole family can go luggage also can be kept A nice car this is called what sankalpa fancy and that sankalpa will lead to what kama for some days you entertain this thought it is nice it is very good worth having if one has money one should buy not me so far it has not come to me as long as you are saying this object is nice it is worth having it is sankalpa fancy then you say and when you entertain sankalpa for some time then sangat sanjayate kama in bhagavad gita there is a there is a what is called ladder how person falls dhyayato vishayan pumsah sangasteshu pajayate so when you do dhyanam not on rama krishna shiva or brahman dhyanam on some person dhyanam on some object repeatedly thinking is called dhyanam the dhya, dhyanam is derived from dhyai chintaya so keep on thinking about this then what 
it leads to sankalpa and then sankalpa will lead to what kamaha i want this person tere bina bhi kya jeena so <laughs> so without this what is life you know i if i marry i will marry this person only all other my brothers and fathers <laughs> that's how they say in gujarati they say like this aur sab mere bhai baap aise bolte hai all right so this is called kamaha so sankalpa and kamaha and in in the scriptural language this sankalpa is called shobhana dhyasah shobhana dhyasah means superimposition of niceness this happiness so superimposition of happiness on the objects people situation that is called sankalpaha objects do not have happiness if objects have happiness you know simple logic is that object should give happiness to everybody like fire has got heat then heat is available for everybody indian or american old or young everybody because heat is the quality of fire similarly if happiness is the quality of the object it should be available to everybody but you tell me one object in this world which gives happiness to everybody all the time tell me one object whole day you think and tell me in the satsang swami ji this object gives happiness to everybody all the time i used to think that everybody likes chocolates ice cream and stories that was my thinking but i found many people say i don't like chocolates ah, i was very happy about that why so my thinking was wrong i was happy to think i was happy to know it was a wrong thinking some people don't like ice cream so is there any object you tell me one person in the world whom everybody likes is there any person even bhagwan sir krishna was not like duryodhana hated him rama was not like by the way there was a washerman who said what rama is i will not be like him you know there was always somebody so this is a very good thing to know that nobody is loved by all so never struggle to get love of everybody there will be always some people who will say oh, what is this this class i am conducting i am going with my own speed some people say wow swami ji is explaining so much detail some people will like it some people say what is this you know does he think we are children or something we should just go and say manohi dividvam prakta pure impure and pure means and obit kama and sankalp go ahead we have to cover 22 shlokas you know. then afterwards you will go fast you know. there are also problems <laughs> i am sure there will be some people so i generally go by what is beneficial to most of the people my prayer before the camp will be always that let something be told which is beneficial to people let people get benefited by the camp not impressed by swabi benefited by the camp that is what is important whatever you do there will be always somebody to criticize कुछ तो लोग कहेंगे लोगों का काम है कहना सो दैट इज ऑलवेज देयर पीपल विल से आई एम जस्ट ट्रांसलेटिंग इंग्लिश पीपल विल से समथिंग बिकॉज दैट इज द जॉब एंड दे फोर वी डू नॉट गो बाई वॉट पीपल थिंक वी गो बाई वॉट इज टू बी डन ऑल एट सो हियर अशुद्धम काम संकल्पम मींस द माइंड इज इम्प्योर व्हेन इट इज एंडोर्ड विथ कामा एंड संकल्पा एंड व्हाट इज द टेक्निकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ संकल्पा सुपर इम्पोजिशन ऑफ हैप्पीनेस इवन दो ऑब्जेक्ट डज नॉट हैव हैप्पीनेस बिकॉज नो ऑब्जेक्ट गिव्स हैप्पीनेस टू एवरीबडी बट 
we superimpose. In South India, people love jackfruit. But person like me who was coming from different background, we, I am not able to relish, you know. Jackfruit does not have anything, it is neutral. I tell in the class, so people do not bring jackfruit to enthusiastically at that also. <laughs> All right. So, idea is that we superimpose happiness. Many times, you know, people will say they see some marriage of girl and boy. How come this girl married this fellow? That is why they say that beauty lies in the eyes of beholder. No object, no object has got happiness as its intrinsic quality. No object, no person, no situation. You tell me which season is liked by all? Is there any season? Cold, heat, you know, the summer, winter. In fact, here in this group itself, there are some people who will say, I like winter. I will raise my hand for winter. Ah, winter I like. Summer is very difficult. But there are people who like summer. Are there people who like summer uh, compared to winter? Compared to winter. Ah, they like it. Oh, oh, winter may pura, oh, oh, pura, you know, cold and sneezing and all. So, there is no situation which like by all. It means the object does not have happiness intrinsically. Therefore, one more easy, in, interesting to note and useful to note is, somebody does not like you does not mean you are not lovable. Person does not like you because his likes and dislikes are not matching with what you are. That is it. It is not that intrinsically something is wrong with you, unnecessary you internalize. If, if somebody who does not have interest in Vedanta and he comes because his friends has asked him to come and he is feeling bored, based on that should I conclude, oh I am not a good teacher, I am teaching for so many years, but still people yawning, people are looking here and there, See, that is bound to happen, even in this class happens. So, I do not judge because some people will like, some people do not like. Therefore, no object has got happiness intrinsically in it. We superimpose and that is called Shobhana Dhyasaha, which is called Sankalpaha here. And the mind which is predominant with, predominated by this Kama and Sankalpa is called Ashuddham Mana. A person who has got lot of sankalpas, lot of desires, that too obsessive desires, that mind is ashuddham. And this ashuddham manaha, filled with kama and sankalpa, will be expressed in the form of anxiety, anger. As Bhagavan says in the third chapter, Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Maha, Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Rajoguna Samudbhavaha, Mahashano Mahapapma Vidhyena Miha Vairiram. So, this Kama itself will be converted into Krodha, anger. So, more desires, especially obsessive desires, then anger, anxiety are bound to be there. Person is always restless anxious, angry and that type of mind, anxious, angry, frightened is ashuddham and kama vivarjitam shuddham, the mind which is free from desires and thereby free from the desire born anxiety, anger etcetera that is called shuddham, pure. So, the mind which is peaceful, the mind which is available to focus on the given subject matter. Why is it so? Because kama vivarjitam, because free from this obsessive desire, binding desires. 
I am using the word binding desire. What is the meaning of binding desires? Binding desires are those, if they are not fulfilled, they create disturbance. Those type of desires are called binding desires. Non-binding desires are in the form of preferences. If it happens, fine. If it does not happen, fine. That is called what? Non-binding desires. Generally, I in Bangalore, I used to give this example. I said your desire for coming to the class is what? Non-binding desire. If it is there, fine. If it is not there, fine. Non-binding desire. Here, I do not give this example. Why? Because you have come at to attend the classes. So, therefore, I do not give. But at the fifth or sixth day, perhaps I can give because people are tired. So, non-binding desire is the fulfillment or non-fulfillment do not make difference in my happiness, in my composure. So, when we say kama here, we mean binding desire. So, the mind which is free from this binding desires, strong obsessive desires, that mind is called shuddham, pure. And that mind is called vidyamshat, vidyamsha, tikakara said vidyamshatvat shuddham. That mind is available, qualified to receive this understanding. Whereas, ashuddham manaha is endowed with this kama and sankalpa in abundance. All right. Now, in the next shloka, this idea that ashuddham mana is the cause for bondage, shuddham mana is the cause for freedom is explained. Mana, e, mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha yoho bandhaya vishaya saktam Muktyai nirvishayam smritam. Okay, details we'll see, and the meaning we'll see in the next class. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachyate Purna Sya Purna Madhaya Purna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om